Speaker. Honourable Damien O'Connor. Speaker, thank you. It's nice to speak towards the end of this debate. Hopefully, have the final word. The last speaker just said that there's a problem with freedom campers. No, there's a problem with effluent disposal, and there's a problem with infrastructure. And it's quite bizarre that in this year of the Rugby World Cup, where we are hoping to welcome tens of thousands of extra pe people to this country, we're rushing through Parliament a piece of legislation that will cut right across what we have told them about New Zealand right. and their experience in this New Zealand. And it is quite outrageous that a government that is prepared to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on stadia up and down this country has not been prepared to spend any money on basic toilet infrastructure for the tens of thousands of people who come here. They cut the Swiss scheme, a scheme where central government assisted local government to put in place proper toilet facilities when necessary. This government cut that, spent hundreds of millions on stadia, and now is saying to the people that's well, well, it's gone out marketing around the world to say, come and enjoy New Zealand, come and enjoy our Rugby World Cup, but if you park in that particular spot, you're likely to get a note after five days from the rental car company to your permanent address, in which case you can respond. Look, Mr Speaker, the point is, this SOP to the bill, brought in by the Minister, is so complex and so bizarre to, to prescribe the way that the rental car companies can charge any fine. It makes a mockery of anything the National Act government, supported by Peter Duntu, says about compliance costs, about nanny state, about regulation, because this is the worst that I have seen in this parliament. We do have an issue. We've had an issue for quite a while. And actually it's not just people who camp at night, it's actually people who want to go to the toilet during the day in their travels up and down New Zealand. But what this bill does is not actually say we'll look at the outcomes and the adverse effects of this and we'll try and address it. No, we'll just say, point blank, you shall not camp here. We've given the discretion We've given the discretion to the councils. Oh, and, and we've had assurances that, oh, it's only where the council identifies a problem. Well, the council might say, look, we, we get a few rubbish bins that are filled up there. It costs us a bit to clear them. We'll just declare that no camping. That will save us the cost of clearing the rubbish tins. And that will be sufficient for a council to say, no, blanket ban. Well, that's quite bizarre. In a country that has prided itself on outdoor experiences, the Speaker and the Chair full well knows that, that, that these are the things that, to quote Robin from Copperfields last night, well, that's the fun of New Zealand. Being able to go out and park up, be responsible. Yes, we do have an issue around the education and around infrastructure. So for the growing number of people who come to New Zealand and those who go out and who have less understanding of, of effluent disposal, then perhaps we do need to educate them. But in the same way that, that this bill attempts to educate New Zealanders by putting notices in the Gazette, oh, very well, widely read newspaper, as my colleague Mr Rick Barker said, and in the other key metropolitan newspapers, and those notices will educate the people of New Zealand as to where they can't um, freedom camp. Oh, everyone, I, I know they do. Particularly those people out in the regions where, in fact, you know, they have the camping spots next door to them. They won't have any idea. And so this prescriptive, bizarre, draconian, autocratic piece of legislation is going to kill, is going to kill the image that New Zealand has around the world of a place of relaxation of freedom, of an experience that truly is unique. We've been marketing New Zealand for you know, close to 100 years, I guess, and trying to encourage people to come here. And this bill is going to cut right across their expectations. And the one thing that will destroy New Zealand's reputation is, is expectations that are not met, or worse still, that are completely contrary to what they've been told.
So what will the camper van companies and the hundreds and thousands of camper vans that have upgraded, they're fully self-contained, they are modern, technology has, has meant that there is virtually no impact from them, particularly if they're able to dump at proper dump stations. What are those camper van companies going to say to their clients? Look, come and hire our beautiful camper van, but look, actually, you know, it's not much better than a car because you're going to have to go to the main centres to camp or to camping ground. It is ridiculous and it cuts across all our efforts for many, many years. But I have to finish, Mr Speaker, saying that it's, it's worse than many state. It, it's a piece of legislation that, that is supported, developed by a knee-jerk reaction from a senior minister in Cabinet, Nick Smith, supported by, and I have to say, I, I, I'm rather sad that Pete, the Honourable Peter Dunn has supported this, because he has championed the rights of outdoor users, of fishermen, of, trampermen for, of trampers for many years, and he knows that these people are very offended by this, and, and I, I, he should be opposing this piece of legislation, and I hope he will be, because his constituency, the people he's, he's fought for, will be absolutely gutted when they get in the mail or are told, move on, Sonny, move on, you're not allowed to camp here, move on down the road. These people know the outdoors, they know what to do, they probably have a shovel in their car, they probably know where to go and, and go to the toilet. But no, the poo police will be knocking on their door of their tent or their camper van and saying, not allowed to camp here, sorry, there'll be a fine in the mail, instant fine. That is bizarre. In a country of four million people, the size of the UK, how will people from the UK comprehend the draconian, the autocratic and the nanny state legislation that we're just about to pass in this House. I think it's a serious backward step, Mr Speaker. There are better ways of dealing with this problem and making New Zealand a welcoming and uh, place for visitors. For the tens of thousands of people who come here for the Rugby World Cup, we've rushed this piece of legislation through and I think it's quite bizarre. Louise Upston.